JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, here on the floor of Telecom Exchange NYC 2016. Joining me here today is Phil Koblenz, he's the COO of New York Internet. Phil, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having me, Jamie. So, tell us about all your array of solutions, particularly what makes you different from your competitors. Sure, so NYI is a uh, data center provider. Um, and frankly, these days, what, what we're trying to articulate as our differentiator is a conversion of the data center facility to a solutions facilitator. So um, it's, it's, it's much more than um, simply a commoditized based resource. You know, what we're trying to do is um, uh, really cater to our customers' ability to seamlessly handle the logistical hurdles of operating infrastructure so they can focus on their core competencies. Yeah, and when I think of NYI, I think of customer focus. You know, everything you do is driven by what your customers need. Um, and clearly, in, in all avenues of uh, solutions you provide, you know, that that's the overarching theme, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the bottom line is that, you know, there are all sorts of managed services that, that we provide um, on the hardware side, on the software side, all the way up, up through the application. Um, and the idea of the NYI technicians having that, that capability 24-7 um, is something that's available to our customers, whether they avail themselves of it initially or not. So just simply by virtue of being an NYI customer, you have access to um, you know, a level of capability that, that uh, you just don't with some of our competitors. And what I love, particularly about your infrastructure solutions, is this hybrid capability, how clients can leverage NYI to protect their operations. Can you tell us a little bit more about your hybrid solutions? Sure, I mean, I think at this point, the way people look at their overall application is that there's going to be a piece of it that is reliant and, and makes sense to a public cloud deployment, whether it be AWS or Google Compute or, or, or Azure. Um, there's, a, there's a component of it that, that might uh, be um, uh, more relevant to say a public, uh, private cloud um, solution like, uh, like our VMware based private cloud. And there's clearly still um, some applications, whether they be legacy or, or particularly processor or memory intensive, that lend themselves to uh, a co-located or bare metal solution. And having the ability to uh, manage all three of those things under one roof is incredibly useful in, in streamlining um, how solutions are, are delivered to, to our customers. So when you talk about something like you know, a hurricane season or, or that, being able to certainly mix and match those services and deploy either locally within a, one of our facilities or use um, our relationship with Megaport to have you know, direct AWS connections and, and uh, migrate workloads to a public cloud environment or leverage our private cloud resources in one of the other seven facilities around the country um, that, that you can avail yourself of simply by being under the NY umbrella is incredibly useful. And you no longer have to worry about you know, theoretically seeing how these facilities perform because in 2012 there was a superstorm that showed you exactly uh, what would happen in, in these types of uh, uh, scenarios and, and we performed beautifully. Otherwise I wouldn't bring it up. <laughs> exactly. So what type of customers uh, do you usually uh, cater to? Um, I'd say it runs the full gamut. Obviously in, in every vertical there are customers that require infrastructure solutions these days. Um, I think we tend to have customers in the technology field, you can call it Web 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever version uh, they're claiming these days, that maybe started in an AWS or a public cloud environment and are now realizing that you know, that's, that's not necessarily the most cost effective way to continue their growth with their consistent workload. So, so that's a huge area of growth for us. There's also education, um, uh, uh, healthcare, and, and legal services that, that all have you know, stepped up their um, adoption of uh, digitized uh, elements of their own infrastructure, and, and they have you know substantial compliance requirements that lend themselves to um, you know a data center environment. So, my last question, but I love when I have my C levels up here next to me because I like to hear their vision for the company. So, if you were to peer into your crystal ball, what's in store for NYI in the next six to twelve months? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're going to continue this trend to start taking ownership of more and more of the services within our data center that, that aren't in the wheelhouse of our, of our customers. So as we continue to see areas where they struggle to keep up with the emergent technology demands of their own um, applications, 
um, we're, we're going to continue to allow, you know, assist them in leveraging the data center and making the most cost effective decisions uh, from an actual solution standpoint rather than just an ease of implementation. It's all about um, uh, kind of bridging that gap between some of the logistical hurdles that come along with infrastructure and allowing our customers to really get the best of both worlds. And for our viewers who want to know more information? www.nyi.net. I can say that's a beautiful website. It is beautiful. So nyi.net, check it out. Thank you, Phil, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jamie. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV.